Hey guys, I'm here in Jupiter, the city, not the planet, and I met an incredible couple, Mary and Marcus, who converted an ambulance, y'all. They have this super cool rig, and I actually met them thanks to Instagram, which is awesome. So let's go check it out. We're here with Marcus and Mary. Hey, and this is Kona. This is our uh, fearless leader, <laughs> here, the scruffy one. Tiny scruff. And uh, today she's going to give you a tour of the ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> so, Marcus, this is an ambulance, which is pretty neat. But what's the story? Like, how did y'all get your hands on this? Well, actually, we picked it up because it was the most budget-friendly whip um, on the market at the time. So here we have the, uh, the, the Ford E350, and uh, this is Captain Kona's uh, personal vehicle. Um, yeah, it's got the biggest engine you can find. Not the most eco-friendly green vehicle out there, but we make up for it, you know. Our carbon footprint is still pretty minimal. Uh, this is some storage. This is an uh, outer for coats, jackets. We can get into our inner closet here and shoes and all that other good stuff. Down here is where we keep our backup batteries. This puppy here slides out. We got two batteries. We got some power tools in there. Some uh, gas leak detectors, very important. This is our, uh, our, our, our sports activities drawer. Perfect. This is more, uh, more storage back here. Random jerry cans, you know, fishing rods, fishing poles, sweeping brush. Uh, sand. Sand is a huge thing in van life that I didn't know about until I started it. You get, you get so much sand every day. It's ridiculous. This is the most important cabinet of all. This has got our spare tire. Behind the tire is the important stuff though. Behind the tire we have our power converters, uh, power inverters. We have an old vacuum pump and a medley of wires uh, from the ambulance and all the equipment I guess that used to have there. Um, and I cannot tell you exactly what it all does, but I know it works and sure isn't that half the battle. Yeah, this is our laundry chute. Still playing around with the handle, and this is our shore power right here. Of course, we have the front cab. This is the uh, the spot. The this is the cockpit, so to speak. It has all the you know old instrumentation and dials for for, for the scene lights, the load lights, the siren lights, the, the speaker. It's, it's all there. Um, of course, we can't use it in traffic because that would be against the law. But yeah, it's it's um. It's got almost 300,000 miles on it, and so far, so good. Runs like a beast, no complaints. So, Mary's gonna take us on a tour of the inside, but let's go check it out. Welcome. <laughs> Come in. Good girl. So, here is Ambi. Come on in. Um, I'll stop and give Kona a little treat first. Our little dog section. So all of the storage units came in the ambulance as is. We just kind of painted the trim and do some touch-ups and added some rice paper so you wouldn't feel kind of claustrophobic being able to see all of your interior possessions. Okay. Um, we added, this used to be a uh, chair that came in and we cut it out and added in a sink. We have the foot pump, which you would just take out. Perfect. Put it down and then you pump for the water mm -hmm. and that's where we have our five gallon gray tank and fresh water tank and then we just have this for like quick little convenient Kona knows that's for her water. <laughs> <Kona's> water. <laughs> um, yeah so that's that. This used to be a chair so this is like the one area we actually modified mainly. Gotcha. Cut it out and turned it into a little sink area. It's perfect right there. Yeah. Height is about five foot seven ish. I'm five foot four, so that's the relation there. Um, it's like perfect for you. Right? Yeah, for me, it, it, it's not an issue at all. Uh, Marcus is six foot four though, so he has to duck a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's <that's> key. <laughs> Everything that's in here was already in here when we bought this. We just covered it with some rice paper, painted up the sides, maybe a little bit of touch ups. Um, and added some just different aesthetic elements 
Yeah, I mean, you did a great <laughs> job as far as aesthetically pleasing. I mean, the greenery yeah. in here, the mirror, I feel like opens it up even more. Makes it feel a little bit bigger than it is. The yeah. white helps. Yeah, I love all the <laughs> white. Here we have also the bed we added on top of the bench that already came in the ambulance and it comes into like three different modes we mainly leave it as is in bed mode right now um just because it's convenient for us but we can also kind of do a murphy bed situation and hook it up or push it in into a couch mode situation as well just to give you a little more walking space here also we have up here storage that we use for this is like kona's dog stuff mainly some books and really just like bathing suits over here that we keep just things that we aren't grabbing every second and then our main storage we um, keep over here toiletries um, one shelf of clothing for myself one for Marcus um, we keep like underwear and socks and all of that in here um, our electronics and all of our kitchen stuff in here and then this is our vitamins and medicine cabinet over here we just added some some fake greenery. We used to have live plants, but they were a little bit hard for me to maintain. Okay, spin. Sit. Wait. Okay. <laughs> Good girl. When we don't have any fresh fruit, rather than just having the basket hanging, we'll hang up our speaker because we do use that every day. Um, and just kind of keeps it out of the way. And Is this a seat belt? Yes. So Perfect. that is when you want to stay in the back you can legally stay in the back and seat belt up this is like our little pop-up table so normally we would, if we we're gonna eat or something Marcus will sit there and I'll sit here and here's our little table so cute <laughs> I love it yeah and then you never even really need to stand up because everything's kind of uh -huh. within reach our electrical situation we haven't installed solar panel yet we will eventually, but we mainly use our 12 volt hookups that came with the ambulance. And pretty much everything, we charge our phones, we, the fan hooks directly there. Um, that's mainly what we need electrically. And then we have our little portable stove. This is our little pantry. We keep all our food in here. But we did pick uh, the interior to be mainly all white just because the whole idea behind that is it kind of breaks up the space to be a little more open feeling. You feel like it's a bigger space than it actually is when it's white, we found. Um, so we use, just to keep it low budget and low weight, um, we did stickers for everything. So this is like peel and stick tile, peel and stick marble, even our walls just to make it a little bit easier to clean, we did peel and stick vinyl. Um, so even though it's white, it's not paint. So this is a hidden door. So Mary, tell us more about this. Yeah, so this we actually are going to probably swap out the frame to fit it a little more secretively, but basically you just open up right there and that is our laundry chute. And you can access the laundry chute from the outside of the ambi. Wow. I'm just in awe about that. Seriously, <laughs> that's amazing. Here we have our AC unit up here, which is powerful, industrial, heavy duty, it's the best. Underneath we have like a, like a cleaning storage, Lysol wipes. We also keep our, um, our two top stove burner up there, which is fantastic. Anyone, you do not need more than two tops. Anyone who says they do is lying to you. This is a wardrobe that you definitely need, especially if you know, you're traveling with females who have a lot of um, you know, work clothes, uh, beach clothes regular clothes you know guys we can get away with like a gear bag and some dirty old runners but you kind of need somewhere to hang up shirts and jackets and your work wear so it's fantastic it works perfect it keeps our shoes off the floor we we haven't really dressed it up a whole lot you know but for now we're just uh trying to get by he says built in <laughs> very cute i think it's amazing though how much already came in here that y'all were saying yeah. right how little y'all had to kind of fix up in here yeah, everything was budget friendly that way because we didn't really have to do much. It came as you see it and we just kind of made it a little bit different colors, a little bit different things that matched our life and personality. Oh, I love it. All right, so does the ambulance have a name? So we've been calling her Ambie because it just happened very naturally. Right. <laughs> Two syllables. Pretty straightforward, yeah. Right. But it's stuck. It's easy to be like, all right, where's Ambie? What are we doing? But how long have y'all been living in it? Um, so we moved in 
June 1st, exactly, because our lease ended on our apartment on May 31st. Which, if you're from South Florida, isn't the best time to move into <laughs> no. an ambulance. It's possibly the hottest place in, in North America for mm -hmm. like four that months time of year? straight. Yeah. But we yeah. did it. We did it. Yeah. Yeah. Dog and all. It was... It was yeah, you, you, what you realize when you're moving into a tiny home on wheels is you really don't live inside. You live your life outside of the ambulance right. and then you just come home. So the big question, right, is why move into a small space, especially on wheels, right? Like what led y'all here? That's a big question, right? So what do y'all think? So, so we were talking about it forever. We were like, oh, why don't we move into a, you know, like an old VW? We, were, we talked about it for months and mm -hmm. months, and we just got tired of talking about it, so we're gonna do it. So our lease just happened to be running up um, at, in like June, and we were talking about it, and we said, let's just do it. And I think, I think like maybe eight weeks or six weeks before our lease was gone, we said, we're doing it, we're moving into a van. We had no idea what right. we were gonna move into. It was kind of last minute of a plan. I'm, in general, pretty on board with the minimalist kind of mindset and just wanting to emphasize the areas of our life that we actually, you know, care more about. And so we wanted to put, put more attention and focus on things we were passionate about and spend our time on that. And so just the, ideal, the idea that you could live in a smaller scenario and have the mobility just called us for a sense of freedom and just like putting our priorities where we wanted to put them. Right. And I know it seems daunting and scary to downsize and mm -hmm. it's so much easier than you think once you take the leap like it's right. so much easier than you think to, right. to live in such a small space coming from a you know a six foot four guy like it is yeah. you'd be surprised how easy it is to, to pack it up and put it all in four wheels like for the van if you don't mind me asking how much was the whole project costing y'all yeah um, we've tallied it up Mm -hmm. or pretty close to it anyway give or take a few uh burger kings or you know <laughs> pub subs you know right the van itself we got on a good deal for 3500 bucks mm -hmm. um, just on like craigslist are we gonna do it we're doing it and all within <laughs> one week we just found something for the right price and went with that right so it so it costs us thirty five hundred bucks on 3, the way. Thirty five hundred for the ambulance, and then just cosmetics because mostly all the storage and everything for the most part was already here. Right. That was less than a thousand dollars more. Right. Dang. So for the mattress, which is you know expensive right. enough, right? That was the beds, backing is you know and just little things that right. add up like twenty bucks here, twenty bucks there, that type of thing, just right. to make it kind of feel like home. Um, yeah, and definitely less than a thousand dollars. I will say like the best thing we did was put in the floor. The floor is like 69 bucks. You know, we got four times more sheets of um, uh, flooring than we needed, but it was the best thing we did. As <laughs> yeah, soon as we put the floor it. down, like we could walk around without getting mm -hmm. sandy feet or dirty. It just felt like a home. That was right. the first thing we did and that was it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I said, minimal work. We put some some white sheeting down. We put some vinyl stickers up on the walls, and that was it. Mm -hmm. you know, like we were good to go in like two weeks, and that was just working on the weekends. You know, like eight hours on a Saturday, six hours on a Sunday, or something. Mm -hmm. Like it was pretty mobile. So we definitely lucked out. And, and so in here, I'm noticing there's no toilet, no shower, right? Mm -hmm. So how do y'all manage with that? What what do y'all do for showers and like? Pre-planning. It's it's <laughs> very important to plan when you're kind of. Uh, outdooring Corbett. or camping or glamping whatever you want to call Glamping. it luckily we're in south florida there's a lot of beaches so you have a lot of public park mm. facilities mm -hmm. beach facilities right we were members at like a 24-hour gym but, which is great for showers but and, we didn't join that gym until like two or three months into this right right it took us so eight we weeks to realize every day or you know whatever at the beach here we just used biodegradable soap and went in our bathing suits we'd go every morning at sunrise, go walk along the pier, get a coffee, um, go in the ocean, and then walk up and shower off with some <laughs> good old biodegradable soap. And that's right. what I did. Yeah. That's what we both did, yeah. And it's it's pretty great here in Florida because it's 85 degrees every day. <laughs> right. So but it's... once it started getting a little bit colder, that's when we joined the gym just for the sake of being able to take a real warm shower because the water's still cold at the beach showers. <laughs> right. 
there's an adjustment period, no doubt. Like for a good month, we were like, oh my god. <laughs> right. You get used to the 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 AC and the the uh, the cold right. tile floors, and you know that that. that toilet on tap as you talk about mm -hmm. just yeah it's great but once you you kind of throw yourself into it your mindset shifts and um i don't know it becomes natural to just live with less right but <laughs> if you are in a jam and you're stuck somewhere say you're parked up overnight and you're 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 parked outside uh publics and there's no toilets open if you are stuck and you're you do not <laughs> want to use a good old-fashioned piss jug all right <laughs> there are these you can buy. There's many versions of right. these. Tell us about it. <laughs> right, so as you can see, it's your standard plastic bag with a dual cord system up top. It's quite leak proof, sound proof, you cannot go wrong. Sound proof? It, and it has this little pad inside which uh, absorbs, just like the commercial, you, you know, you pour the blue fluid on the cloth and it absorbs exact same thing but in a white bag. It's great if you're stuck. Right. Like I said, pre-planning is essential, but if you're in a jam... I love those bags. Revolutionary. <laughs> they, do, they do help in a jam, as you would say. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth. You yeah. know, Everyone's always curious about how do you survive, and that right. is a big one. You have to be close with your partner. Yeah, and yeah. once you get on the whole regular eating and cooking schedule, like... You figure out your routine, if you know what I'm saying. I know I mean, what you mean. You never you want go. to be in too big of people's say. Say no more. <laughs> say no more. Stop. Yep. Well, guys, I'm inspired, seriously, by everything you're saying. Like, you know, just the living for your passion and, and getting rid of the stuff to do what you want to do and just saying, do it, you know, yeah. and, and you'll find a way. Dive in. If yeah. it's whatever's important to you, most important to you, just kind of unfolds itself that yeah. way. If y'all could give someone one piece of advice for someone wanting to do this, what do you think y'all would tell them? Oh my God. Just do it. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf it over here. Yeah. Just do, do it. it. It doesn't matter your budget. It doesn't matter like what your lifestyle is. I mean, we are still currently working full time. Eventually we will start traveling full time, but um, just, yeah, yeah, just work with what your lifestyle and what your budget and what your plans are go for it and it's personalized DIY right <laughs> and it's not the end of the world you you might try it out for eight months right. six you can months always just go back any questions for these guys from the audience comment below and we'll get the answer <laughs> right on yeah thanks for coming checking out our our ambi our little home on wheels if you want to check out more of our adventures as they unfold follow me on Instagram so yeah guys thanks for uh, checking out the whip um, You'll see us uh, at South Florida in a parking lot, intersection, uh, Starbucks near you. Don't be afraid to come up, say hi, ask for um, the grand tour in person. Come on, come on. say bye. <gasps> Who's that? Who's that? Thank y'all so much for the tour of y'all's home. The Ambi is amazing. Kona is amazing. <laughs> but seriously, I wish y'all the best of luck on the road, guys. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. Of course, y'all. And y'all, thank y'all for watching. And if y'all want to see more like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you know anyone out there who wants us to tour their van, let us know. See y'all next time. How's my hair count? Looks good. Looks great. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, we're ready for my close-up. Let's do it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. All right. Should we do are it again? You, you... So he's a part-time van lifer, part-time comedian. <laughs> oh, my God. Part-time electrician. Right? Why are you yeah. stuck on this? <laughs> So, I don't know what to say. It's. Oh, now you're. Sorry, I, I, I thought it was one and done.